to get things going? Well, I think there are several moments that you see some things that, you know, obviously there's reason for to be optimistic. You know, some of it's been the, the play of the defense. Some of it's been the play of the, the guys up front on the offensive line. Um, it's been some of the play on some individuals that have just done some really good things and just, you know, it's just kind of everything's been coming together and heading in the right direction. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things to point to. Um, is there one specific thing? I don't think so. And um, Atlanta was a team that I think a lot of people thought would be more of a rebuilding team this year, especially after uh, trading Matt Ryan or whatever. Clearly, they've probably exceeded some expectations. What, what do you kind of see from them compared to where, where they were uh, when you saw them last year? Well, I, 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 I see that they've kind of built off of what they did last year. Um, I, th I think one thing you see is they have a little bit more of a mobile quarterback. They involve him a little bit more in their run game. Um, I think they, um, you know, they, they, they took a big hit losing Pitts. I think he's a heck of a football player. Um, but they've got some pretty good pieces. Um, you know, I, I think they've got uh, a yeah, very dynamic, explosive running game that we've, we've got to be able to handle. The fact that, um, you know, Atlanta is such a run heavy team, um, obviously that's going to be a huge key in this football game. Uh, when you look at, their offensive attack with Mariota under center. What are the, some of the challenges this Atlanta offense can present to you guys? Well, I, I think first and foremost, you know, um, I, I think Cordero is a heck of a football player. And when he gets the football in his, 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 uh, his hands, he's, he's a dynamic guy that we've got to account for. I think uh, Mariota poses the, uh, the threat of quarterback mobility. And so we've got to be able to handle that as well. And, um, yeah, they are a very, as I said earlier, a dynamic running team that we have to be able to contain um, and try to limit as much as possible just because, you know, they are a play-action team as well. Fun little question for you. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Every year is different. What are you thankful for this year, Ron? Well, family. Uh, for Wentz, uh, third string Sunday is – the plan for him to be the backup, though, when healthy, right? Well, well, we'll we'll take it one game at a time, you know, more so than anything else. Right now, um, as we're getting ready for Atlanta, uh, Taylor will start, and we'll have uh, Sam as the backup. And uh, off the wall question here, but next year's a, a Black Friday game for the NFL. What do you think of the possibility of playing on Friday? And did you not know that? Next Friday is a Black Friday. No, no, next year is a Black Friday game. They're, they're having one on for the NFL. The NFL is going to have games on Black Friday next year. So you need to know. Oh, after, day after Thanksgiving? Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I was, I mean, you know, we have games on Christmas. We have games on, yeah. I mean, every other holiday. And, you know, so what the heck? What's the difference? <laughs> sure. I mean, seriously, I mean, it just, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, Okay, I means if we we're playing, I'm not shopping. <laughs> Are you normally a, a big shopping guy? On? No. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> um, Come on, I'm not supposed to be giddy, all right? Uh, uh, Deron Payne. Um, <laughs> it's a heck of a segue. You're setting uh, me up. Yeah, a I, you know, I'm just gonna just keep firing them out here. Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen. Obviously, a lot of attention on their pass rushing ability. Correct. But what do you see? How much of what you guys are doing, stopping the run, kind of starts with them? Well, I mean, the, the philosophy is, 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 is you, want to, you want to play vertical. You want to play into your creases. You want to play vertical. And so it kind of the idea and the thought process is you, you play the run on your way to the quarterback. You know, I, I think we're one of the top teams in, in, in tackles for loss. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with, with, with how vertical our guys get up front. Um, and if they can get into the creases, they can be very, very disruptive, as we've seen. And, and I think that's, you know, I think that's part of it. You know, when you look at those guys, it's not we're not two gapping, we're not grabbing a guy and trying to figure one way or the other. I think they've really bought into to, to the philosophy of this defense of, of what Jack and the uh, defensive guys are preaching. And that is, let's get vertical, let's get after it, and you know, we'll make plays. Mm. Ron, a couple of questions. Um, one, we're kind of in a bubble in the Washington, D.C. market. So since the season started, I've kind of asked some national people about what's the perception of the Washington commanders league-wide. And everyone to a person has said their respect for Ron Rivera is one of the reasons why, um, you know, they feel what they feel about the Washington commanders. How does that make you feel that league-wide, yeah. even after all the stuff 
that you're surrounding, that the national perspective is, is that you are one of the things that holds this team together? Well, I, I think, you know, it's really about the players. And, and that's the thing that, you know, um, I guess it was after the Chicago, I had a little bit of a, a blow up on you guys just because I want to be about the players. Our, our defense just got done playing a great game and, and people wanted to ask me questions about the outside. And I want the focus to stay on those guys. I mean, we've we got some guys that really deserve some accolades and they're just starting to get them. They really are. And, and it's, a, it's a lot of fun to, to see our guys be successful. And that's really what, what we're trying to keep the focus on. Um, I think that's a big part of it is, is if we can just keep our focus on this, we have an opportunity, we have a chance. I mean, we've won some games. I'm pretty excited. I'm excited to see what the crowd's going to be like on Sunday. I really am. And, and again, because to me, it, it's about the players. It's about what they do on the field. That, that's really important and really cool. And the other question is, um, obviously, um, they, they're going to be honoring Sean Taylor on Sunday. I mean, you weren't here um, 15 years ago. Some of us were. Your overall thoughts on Sean as a football player, the impact that he had, and how, so, how he's had an effect on the next generation of defensive players that want to be like Sean was, want to do what Sean did. I mean, he, he, he was more than just a player in this league. What are your thoughts coming from another I, I, generation I of defensive player? I think the unfortunate part, obviously, you know, he, he lost his, his life at such an early age and, and, and what he could have truly been. Um, what has been really cool has been a lot of young guys after his passing really, you know, understood what he brought to the game, the way he played the game, um, his physicality, his mentality. Um, you know, and, and, it, and it, it's kind of neat for this organization because of the legacy that, that this organization has. I mean, you know, we're one of the originals started in 32, and you look at the, the things that have happened, a lot of social impact things that have happened, um, you know, uh, with Bobby Mitchell as, as, as another example. I mean, this legacy is, is great. I mean, you talk about, you know, uh, the other guys too. I mean, you talk about the John Riggins and the Sonny Jurgensons and, and, you know, guys like that. And now you have Sean Taylor who had a legacy of, of – of, of just being a dynamic, impactful defensive player, especially at the safety position as well. So um, it's kind of a neat thing. It's, it's, it's an opportunity for the organization to honor one of its own, one of its truly one of its own that, that did make that kind of impact. Obviously, every game is important for you guys, but Arthur Smith was saying it's gratifying to be in meaningful games around Thanksgiving. Just how good do you feel about having a game like this mean so much in, in an NFC playoff race? Giddy. Um, it, it really, it, it really, it, I mean, it's really cool. I mean, look, look at us right now. I mean, it, it, it's one of the things that we hopefully are working to and, and we've gotten close to where we can repeat it and we can continue to play well and, 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 and do those things. I mean, it's important because, again, when you get this late into the season, you want that. You want that attention. You want that focus. Also because it keeps the players engaged. It keeps them, you know, tuned in. And, and you know, if you look at it, Every NFC game we will play, as you say, is important. It's got it, it'll it'll be meaningful for us, as will all the games we play. You know, including the AFC games we got to play. But you know, for our guys, more so than anything else, it's about being able to keep them engaged, keep their focus, because we have an opportunity, we have a chance, um, and we can do something pretty pretty cool if we if we can just stick with it. I hear that phrase. This team is built for November, December football when it gets cold. Do you? Do you think that is uh, that notion can actually be true? And, and do you think your team is maybe built for this part of the season? I think we can be, uh, especially with the way we play, if, and, and hopefully the weather will cooperate and be bad. Yeah, seriously. I mean, because if you know, if if you run the ball well, um, and and you get inclement weather, it, it could be to your benefit. If it gets cold, it could be uh, to your benefit. Um, defense being stout and physical up front uh, that helps because if teams are going to run the ball because of the weather this time of season. Um, that's also good. So yeah, it, it could be one of those things that you could sit there and say it's true. What I like to think is, is you know, and, and, and again from some of my past history is just because we get to this point, it's like everything is coming together. You know, guys are, are understanding what we need from them. They're, they're, they're healthy, they're getting healthy, they're back in, and we're putting them in position to be successful. I mean, that's what, you know, I, I kind of hope more so than anything else is, is this time of year we've kind of put it together and now we've put ourselves in a, in a position where we can be really competitive. If there is maybe a game where the, the running isn't there, do you think this passing offense is heading towards a place where it can be the thing that lifts the overall team to a win? I think it can, uh, mostly because of the playmakers we have. Um, you know, we've got a few guys that have shown you that if we put the ball in their catch radius, they're going to go out and make those catches. I mean, 
you know, you, you look at what Terry means to us and Curtis and Jahan, you know, those three guys, if the ball's close, they're going to they're gonna snatch it. Uh, then you look at the, the tight ends that we have and look at their ability to get open. Uh, you know, good examples of what we saw last week from Logan. It was by far his best game of the year. He's starting to look like himself again, like the guy we had a year ago before he got hurt. Um, you know, and you throw Cole into that mix as a young, you know, pass receiving uh, tight end, Arma Armani, who we hope we can get back out on the field, is another one of those young tight ends. And then the back combination. And, and you've seen what it means when A.J. is in space with the ball in his hands as a receiver. So um, I think we have the components. We just got to make sure we can get the ball to them. And, uh, you know, with, with Taylor, there's, you know, it's, uh, you just never know. But uh, you know that it's possible. Got him tight on time. We got time for two more questions. How's Cole Holcomb? Um, Cole's, you know, it's got a foot injury, and, and it's kind of been touch and go a little bit. Um, you know, hopefully it, it turns and it just gets better and better, and we'll see. But, you know. Um, he is going to go see a specialist about it, and uh, we'll see. How has Carson been just on the sideline and meeting rooms, et cetera? Throughout he's been all excellent. This? He really has. He's been a true pro. I mean, when you watch him when he first came back, he, he was, he was you know, he got behind Taylor right away, got behind Sam, and, and really helped out in the meetings. He's, he's still very engaged, asking the types of questions that you would ask, you should ask. Um, and if they aren't asked, he'll ask them. Um, you watch him talking with receivers about their routes. He talked to the running backs about their angles. I mean, talking to the offense line. He has done a heck of a job being part of it um, and staying engaged.